Hello guys, welcome back at my little channel about Torpedo Coaster Break. Today I want to tell something about the play of the ball bearings, of the duomatic hubs, of the duomatic kickback from Fichtel and Sachs. These hubs are searched worldwide and you cannot find better quality. Maybe if you want to drive a hub like this, you have to buy two or three to build one out of it, to have it, to build it in a bike. And with this you have a hub for 10 or 20, maybe more years. And if you want work for the play of the ball bearings, there are three different hubs, three different ways to work for the play of the ball bearings with tools, hook wrenches and I want to show it you now with these five hubs. At the left side you can see two first edition Duomatic, the model 102 and at the right side you can see three hubs from the 70s up it is an automatic and it is the same kind of hub like the Duomatic R2110 and now I show you the three ways. In my hand now is a, the first version of a Duomatic, the Duomatic 102 and it has a flattened axle with a thread 10.5. To work for the ball bearings you only need one hook branch. This is a Duomatic R2110. It has an axle with a thread 9.5 9, 9 and you need two hook wrenches. And the Duomatic R2110 has a fixed cone with T's. And this fixed cone has to be next to the frame. Don't put a washer between the fixed cone and the frame. It damaged your hubs in two or three weeks. The difference to an automatic between a duomatic and an automatic is only the red band or blue band. If you don't have this band, you cannot see the difference only at the engraving. And this is the third version of the duomatics. You need two 17 millimeter spanners to work for the play of the ball bearings. The R2110 comes in two versions. The first for hook wrench and the second edition is you need two 17 millimeter spanners. And this shows the hub shell, if you don't work for the play of the ball bearings, the balls going into the hub shell and damage it. And this shows the lever cone, it is the same with the lever cone. If you don't have a play for the ball bearings, the ball bearings will damage your hub completely. This is the damaged cone and the damaged hub and now you can hear the noises. And this is a new cone and a new hub shell. And now look at the different. In the next five or six minutes I show you how I built a Duomatic 102. For the ball bearings I use normal yellow grease. You can take some grease you also use for cars, for ball bearings of cars. 
It is not a special, special grease for sax hubs. I like very much the ball bearings from the Mod 102. You can also use ball bearings out of three speed hubs from the 60s to fill it into a duomatic. The ball bearings have more balls inside and so it's better for, for the hub to use some ball bearings with more balls. Later, at the 70s, you can find ball bearings. It looks like every second ball out of the ball bearing is lost. But it is a special build that the hub draws easier. But this is bullshit. It is better to use more balls in a ball bearing so you cannot damage your hub shell or your cones so fast. This shows how I work for the fixed cone at the right side. The most of the work for a Dumatic is to clean one or two hubs and to look for the best parts to build one hub out of it. If you have all parts together to build the hub, it is very, very easy and fast. This is oil for bicycle parts. It is resin free and it is better you use resin free oil to build hubs. A duomatic has a dock ring with two noses and it's a little bit difficult to bring the gearbox together with the hub shell. The next step shows the brass brake and a brass brake needs Vaseline. If you have a brass brake, use Vaseline for the brake. If you have a steel brake, use grease for steel brake. This shows the work with sandpaper. If you do this work and later bring Vaseline on the brass brake, the brake will break better.
this is uh, in the lever cone a place for a depot for Vaseline if the hub gets hot the Vaseline gets out of this depot to the brass brake This shows a dust cap from the brake side at the middle of the table and out of this dust cap you can build a dust cap for the driver at the right side. You have to cut the middle of it because the dust cap for the driver is very raw. And now I show with one hook wrench how I work for the ball bearings of a 102. You can use the lock nut below or the lock nut up and so you can find the best play for the ball bearing and a ball bearing has have to be a play don't build your hub without a play of the ball bearings it is very important This shows how I work for, with two hook spanners for a Duomatic R2110. You can think now maybe the flattened axle from uh, Duomatic 102 is better because you only have to use one hook wrench but it is not easy to find a 102 and some are thinking it is a better hub. The R2110 also is a good hub and you can use parts out of a 3-speed H3111 to repair your Duomatic R2110. You can take what you find. Both kinds of Duomatic are good. I think the Zax kickback is the best at the world. Time is past 30 years now, but it is, it's the best, yes, it is the best Duomatic you can find. This shows how I make a test drive. Every hub I have built, I put in a wheel with a hub shell. Or if I have built a wheel, I make a test drive. I have repaired now five hubs and it feels very good to work with these hubs. I like it very much. At the next time I have much work with my vintage little caravan Ariba Puck and so through the summer I cannot make videos about coaster break but I will be back at the end of the German summer in two or three months and I wish you the best for your bikes and bye bye until the next time yours Don Torpedo